So here we are in the Southwest Early College Campus Girls Gym. What we're going to do today is we're going to illustrate a theorem of geometry using the semicircle here on the floor. Now you'll see at the right end of the diameter is one end of the rope. At the other end of the diameter is another part of the rope. And now in the middle, Sam will pull the rope until it touches the semicircle. So what we got now is an angle. And notice that it is a right angle. You see that angle iron there. All right. Now we'll move it to another place on the circle say there, and we'll put the angle iron down again. And look, it's a right angle again. And now let's do it one more time. And we see that it's still a right angle. So what we'll do in the next part of this video is prove to you why that's always true. Now, before we can prove the theorem, we need to remind you of a couple of geometric facts. The first one is that if you have an isosceles triangle where the two sides are congruent, then it's true that the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. No matter what the shape of the isosceles triangle, the two angles are going to be congruent. The second geometric fact that we need is that the sum of the angles of any triangle is always 180 degrees. So that means this angle, this angle, and this angle add to 180 degrees. A nice way to see that is if you take the two upper angles and move them down against this straight side, you'll see that they add up to a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. Now, finally, we can prove the theorem. So, what we have here is a semicircle. There's the center. And you can see that there's an angle inscribed in the semicircle, hitting the semicircle at this point. And what we want to do is prove that that angle is, in fact, a right angle. So the proof goes like this. First, we draw in a line from the center to that point on the semicircle. Now, that line is a radius of the circle. There are also two other lines on the diameter that are radii of the circle. So all three of those lines have the same length. That means the triangle at the left is an isosceles triangle. And so the two angles opposite those equal radii are also congruent. You see they're being marked with a dot. The same thing is true for the triangle on the right. The two angles are also congruent, and we're marking those with a big star. Now, the entire triangle from either end of the diameter to the point on the circle has an angle measure of 180 degrees. Notice that that angle measure is made up of two dots and two stars. Half of that would be one dot and one star. And that's exactly what the angle at the top is made up of. And half of 180 degrees is 90 degrees. And so the theorem is proven. By the way, this theorem first appears in Euclid's Elements around 300 BC. And it is in Book 3, Proposition 31, that you will find this result.